Hello, I'm Kim Bailey. Welcome back for the final step in my four easy steps to entering your first floral art competition. Step four is staging your design. Staging is the term used for placing your design ready for judging. In some places it is referred to as benching your design, although this doesn't actually mean that you have to put your design on a bench. Okay, we're at the competition venue. We have a vehicle full of materials ready for our design. We've practiced constructing the design to our plan, so why can't I get out of the car? You know what? Even now, more than 10 years after my first floral art competition, I get nervous when I arrive at the competition venue. All it really means is that I care about competing in floral art. I want to do the best I possibly can and have those seeing the design, judges included, appreciate the planning and thought that has gone into the preparation for this competitive show. Well that can't happen unless I get out of the car and into the competition venue. Oh boy do I remember that very first competition of mine. The show was one of the most prestigious in the country and those competing were what I considered the best I had ever seen at floral art in all its forms. I had seen most of them demonstrating floral art and knew that there was both friendship and fierce competition within the group. So who on earth did I think I was to try and break into that group? And then it occurred to me that they all love floral art as much as I did. That they would have had a first competition themselves at one time. And after all, I'd done the planning, the preparation, the practice. And if I didn't go in and get started, I would miss out on an opportunity to see what all that work could do. So I went into the competition room. And you know what? No one asked me why I was there, no one looked at me with surprise, no one even broke stride in their preparations of their own designs. However, I didn't know what to do next or where to go, and I was too nervous to ask any of these old hands. Fortunately for me, one of them must have remembered what it was like, although knowing her better now, I think she was actually just excited to see someone new in the comp competition room. She simply said, hello, you'll find your number on the sheets over there. And that was as difficult as it got once I was in the competition room. After that, I could concentrate on getting my design ready for staging and seeing the results after judging. Except that I also had a look around the room at the different designs already on the bench. Again, <laughs> what on earth did I think I was doing there? All of these designs were way better than mine. Well, I said to myself, you're here now, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You've put in all that preparation work. Just get the design on the bench as perfect as you can. Now let me share with you some other insights for step four, staging your design. In this step, I'm going to cover finding out where to place your design, organizing your work and preparation area, planning the order and timing of your staging, planning for breaks, for food and for drinks, what to do once your design is completed, which actually means don't fiddle with a completed design, and taking photos of your design. There'll also be a little bit about the disaster recovery plan again, in case you need to use it. Walking into the competition area for the first time is like starting a new job. Remember, everyone there had to start at some point. You're there to compete and to learn first and foremost. So focus your energy on this. Check in with the show secretary or a show steward, if there is one, on site. This person should greet you when you arrive, but they might be with another competitor, so wait patiently. It's often the person who accepted your entry form or sometimes another official from the organising committee. Introduce yourself, both with your name and the class or classes that you have entered. Once your attendance has been noted, you'll be given your allocated competition number and directed to where this is located within the competition area. Now sometimes there's no one from the organising committee present. At these competitions, there'll be a printed list of competitor names with exhibit numbers. The listing's usually in class order, and all you need to do is check where your name appears and the relevant exhibit number beside that. Then find where this number has been placed in the competition area, and that's where you put your design. Now that you have your competitor number, find your place in the competition area. Check that the space allocated for you is correct for your class, the size, the access to it, particularly if it's an all-round design. Advise a steward if you're concerned about anything in your allocated area. Put something from your design on your spot 
This is your first entry to the competition area, so mark your spot. It also helps in case someone tries to put their design in your place by mistake before you've staged yours. Check with a steward if something is not right with your space, whether it's the size allocation, the condition of the bench top or the covers if they're being used. Point this out to the steward to note and they will inform the judge if they can't fix it before judging. Advise the steward if you're withdrawing from a class. This of course is common courtesy but sometimes forgotten in the excitement of a competition. Now we're ready to start putting this design together. You're not in your usual design environment, so take the time to organise the space where you'll construct your design for staging. Lay out your tools and mechanics. It is impossible to get something you know is in your tool bag with one hand when you are trying to hold a structure together with the other hand. Use a table or workbench provided or one you bring with you. If you're using the actual competition bench to prepare your design, you must make sure that you don't encroach on someone else's competition space. Keep your area clean and organised. Keep a rubbish bin handy and sometimes keep the floor covered as well. With all your requirements laid out and before you start constructing your design, review the design plan and the practice notes. Look at the time you have available from now until judging. Work out a timetable that includes some breaks and the buffer in case you have a few challenges with the construction of the design. Don't worry if your design is the only one in the competition area. Some competitors will finish their design but not stage it until the last minute before judging. Review all the tasks for staging your design and determine an order of priority for those tasks. Look at the timing and difficulty of the task to help you decide which order of staging you will take, particularly when you're doing more than one design. Get the easiest and quickest design or section of design done first if possible. Our maximum concentration time is 40 minutes, according to research. So even with the adrenaline of a competition, you'll start to lose your edge after an hour of putting your design together. Most staging will take a minimum of two hours, so plan a break for refreshments, for stretching and head clearing. Look at the total time of staging and decide when a break might be appropriate. If time's not available, eat and keep up fluids as you work. If you are having a break, go away from the staging area to clear your head and to ease the stiffness in those muscles that have been in one or two positions for a few hours. I'm going to say this next bit very slowly and clearly. Do not fiddle with a completed design. I'll say it again. Do not fiddle with a completed design. I've heard world champions saying to themselves, don't fiddle, don't touch it after staging a design. This is the single biggest temptation after you've staged your design and it always will be. When you've staged your design according to your plan, take a photo and walk away. Do not keep fiddling or changing parts of your design and never, never change part of your design after seeing someone else stage an entry. With your completed design ready for judging, it's time to take some photos. A picture really does say a thousand words. You will see things in your photos that you didn't see standing in front of your design. They're a great way to review your design after judging as well as a learning tool and a record of your efforts over the years. You'll find yourself referring back to them when you're planning your designs in the future. Now here are two of my designs where the photo told me something I did not see when I was standing in front of the design. The design on the left has a big gap which would have been out of my eye line when I was standing in front of the design, but the camera does not lie. The design on the right has an uneven bounce because the height is not correct in the back piece of bark. In this case I did see it when I looked at the design but I didn't have any plant material to fix it. So the photo serves to remind me in the future to check the balance in my designs and to have that disaster recovery plan I talked about in the last step. Take a photo of your completed designs. Take another photo from the angle or angles at which it will be judged. So if it's being judged from the front, you take your photo from the front. If it's being judged from the front and sides, then you take it photos from the front and from either side, that sort of thing. Check these photos for any glaring errors. Now this is the beauty of having smart devices these days. You can look at it straight away. This is the one time you may adjust your design after you have staged it. Now here I'm talking about broken mechanics, damaged plant material or uncovered mechanics only.
items that are basic to flower arranging, not to do with the way you have designed your exhibit. Leave the staging area clean and tidy, go away until judging is completed. Let me just go back to altering your design after it's been staged. Here is a mobile design. All the parts should be free to move in any direction with air currents and not to touch or be stopped by any part of the design. After hanging this in the competition frame, some of the twig ends relaxed sufficiently to catch another section and stop movement. If I had left it as it was shown here in the photo, the design would not have been judged because it doesn't meet the mobile design standards because all the parts don't move freely. Adjusting this is not going to alter the design overall. because I just broke off the ends. If what seems like a disaster strikes, don't panic. Take a moment to gather your thoughts, get the plans you made for just this situation when you're in the design step. When it's not possible to adjust or amend your design, you only have two choices. Leave it as best you can make it or withdraw from the competition completely. Now here's a design for a world flower show. The wind spinner hanging in the tree has draping plant material hanging from the ends of the bamboo arms of the spinner. When it was completed, I checked at the sizing and at the end of six hours of preparation, discovered that the draping pieces took the design outside the space allowed, thus making it not according to schedule and most definitely would not have been judged. With no time left to alter the spinner, I removed the draping material so that the design could be judged. You can see it's not as good a design without this material, but it would not have been judged if I had left it there. I did not consider withdrawing from the competition. The World Flower Show is only held once every three years, so any opportunity to compete is highly prized. Let me summarise the points I've covered here for when you are staging your design. Find out where your design is to be placed for judging. At some shows, there'll be the show secretary to mark off your attendance and direct you to your place. Remembering that this is usually the person who accepted your entry from the show schedule. Other shows may have a printed list where you'll find your name and a number beside it. The number will be marked on the competition area where your design should be placed. A small number of shows will provide you with an envelope containing your number or numbers which should be placed in front of your design wherever you place it when it's ready for judging. When you're in the competition room, acknowledge others when you arrive if they look at you, but don't chat. This is not yet a social occasion, it is a competition. Everyone is there for the same reason, so get on with the task and leave the socialising until all the designs are finished and all are ready for judging. Don't be intimidated or discouraged by other designs. You've thought about your design, you've planned it, you've practised it, so get moving and stage it ready for judging. After judging, you may have the opportunity to hear what the judges think of all the designs. Sometimes you'll be surprised at what they see in a design that you thought was perfect. Get started on staging your design. Plan your construction time. Lay out all the items you'll need, whether this is on a table provided or the competition bench itself. Work methodically through your plan. This is why you wrote down the sequence of construction when you were planning this design. Check all the components of your design for marks or damage that may have occurred during transport to the competition. If something is damaged and can't be replaced, think about alternatives. Don't give up. Keep your construction area clean. This is particularly important when you're constructing on the show bench. You must ensure that you only use the space allocated to you, even if there's no one else around you when you're staging your design. Keep your rubbish with you and dispose of it as directed by the show organisers. One of the best purchases I ever made in my early competition days was a collapsible rubbish bin. I still use it today. It's a wire-based circular bin that folds flat when not being used and is large enough for all of my offcuts, even if I'm doing 10 designs. A large plastic sheet to cover the floor is a, a practical alternative. When you've finished your staging, dispose of your offcuts as directed by the show organisers or take them away with you. Never leave them in at the competition room for someone else to clean up. When your design's finished and ready for judging, take some photos. These photos should be taken from the angle or angles at which your design is going to be judged. As tempting as it is, do not fiddle with your design. Remember even world champions talk to themselves and tell themselves not to do this. Wait and hear what the judges have to say. What do you do when after all the planning and preparation something does go wrong whilst you're staging your design? 
Remember in step two, I said you should keep a written record of your planning? Now is when that can come in very handy. Go back over the planning and find a way of solving the issue or improvise a new solution that will work for your design. Unless the whole design is ruined, you should always try and stage an entry once you have made it to the competition room. Let me share something with you about the example we've been looking at, citrus glass and grass. The glass shelves came from an old window and had paint along the short edges. I saw this when I was planning and practicing and told myself I should remove all that paint before competition day. Did I? No, <laughs> this meant that I was faced with trying to remove the paint whilst in the competition room or devising another solution. As it turned out, I didn't have time to remove the paint in the competition room, so a new solution had to be found. I had brought the mandarins with me to use in the design and worked out that if I peeled one, the segments could be laid along the glass covering the paint. Placing the unpeeled mandarins in the bottom section of the design would create repetition of this plant material. In the best possible result for this improvisation, the design was placed first. My message, don't waste time despairing, find a solution. Now it's time for judging. Leave the competition room. Judging is generally a closed activity, meaning that no one but judges and stewards may be in the competition room whilst the judging is being conducted. That's it. You've done it. You've entered your first floral art competition. Now is the time to get to know some of the other competitors whilst you're waiting for the judging to be completed. And then what? Once the judging is finalised and the place cards are displayed, have a good look at the other designs. Take notes about how others told the story of the class title or any new or unusual mechanics that have been used. In step one, I mentioned very briefly about taking the opportunity to listen to the judges' feedback. Sometimes these are general sessions where the judges will talk about entries for the class as a whole. At other competitions, there is feedback on each design. And at still others, the judges will complete a short written form that provides you with their thoughts and suggestions about your design. In all cases, these are worthwhile. Hearing the judges' comments on designs other than yours is as educational as the feedback on your design. You can learn from every design, its good and limiting points. Before you leave the competition room after judging, write down your own comments on your design and the process that got you to the competition room. I do this on my planning sheet so that when this class title reappears, I can refer back not just to what I did previously, but also how that worked. Regardless of the outcome of your first floral art competition, it's time to celebrate. You have achieved a special goal. You have entered your first floral art competition. You now have a process to follow for entering even more floral art competitions. If you're not already a member of a group or club, find one where design styles and judging are explored at regular meetings to keep your knowledge up to date. Start looking for other competitions. Chances are you'll see some of the same people at every competition you go to. At least once a year, try a new design style or revisit a design style that you find difficult or even try a new competition. Part of the attraction of floral art competitions for me is that there's always something to learn, something new or something different to see. Most importantly, enjoy the friendships you'll make in this creative arena. You will find people who share your passion for flowers and plants, people who see art in everyday objects and people who want you to share their appreciation for the natural beauty that surrounds us. That's what floral art is all about. It's art with flowers. I wish you every success with your first floral art competition. Please let me know how it goes for you. Maybe we'll see one another at a competition somewhere in the world in the not too distant future. I'm Kim Bailey.